The marionette puppet theater is one of the oldest and most traditional art forms in Myanmar, one which was highly contested during the era of British colonialism and also throughout the long period of military rule. These seemingly innocent puppets enlivened and entertained their audiences by making fun of the oppressive governments. We meet Kim Mao in one of the many kindergartens in Yangon. He directs the most important marionette theater in the city and is now more or less free to express this ancient art form throughout the country and in the schools. So he is a good one, he is a bad one. So in old days, when they are five, the green one win. Long time, but he is a bad one or unjustic. And he is a good one or justic. But finally, the justice or the red one went to the green one. Now, uh, you know, National League for Democracy represent for the red color. They win and they rule the country. So we hope for the good. Myanmar's recent history recounts 50 years of rule by a brutal military regime and total isolation from the rest of the world. However, in 2011, an important phase of change began with a transitional government, composed for the most part of ex-military officials. In addition to the liberation of many political prisoners, including the Nobel Peace Prize winner Aung San Suu Kyi, more freedom was granted to the civil society and the news media. In addition, the initiation of important economical reforms got underway. However, the most drastic turnabout occurred in November 2015, when the first free election was permitted. The National League for Democracy Party, headed by Aung San Suu Kyi, won an overwhelming 80% of the electoral votes, defeating all the other parties who had strong regime influences. The Myanmar constitution would not permit the revered lady to become president, and so she chose to head the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, placing one of her most devoted supporters as president and de facto leader of the country. However, Aung San Suu Kyi has also been nominated as state councillor, which permits her to coordinate the entire ministry. Nonetheless, the military continues to hang on to a sizable amount of power in the country, and it is suspected that they are responsible for the January 2017 assassination of U Ko Ni, an important judicial counselor to the lady regarding Islamic affairs. U Ko Ni had been working on the constitutional law, taking courageous stances in contrast to military interests. Cho Zhua Mo is the director of the Irrawaddy News, one of the most independent and respected internet news sites in the country. But in that case, never ever forget the context of our country, the political situation like. In the government, uh, we have uh, over 20 ministries, but the three key ministries are run by the military the Home Affairs Ministry and Defense Affairs Ministry and Border Affairs Ministry. Those ministries are really, really important. Now you can see what is going on in the northern part of Burma and then the in the western border, uh, you know, the uh, with the Bangladesh. There are conflicts and there are civil wars over there. But we don't exactly know why, you know, those civil wars are being escalated. Uh, after this government took office in April and March. So that's also the biggest question for, for me and for uh, every critic, I think. We cannot say that Aung San Suu Kyi is only the entire country 100%. Almost two years have passed since the historic victory of NLD. And even though the rapture of having the lady at the helm of affairs continues, deep, intricate problems have begun to surface especially with regards to Myanmar's economic situation. It was election year last year and with the new government, we are, we are not really seeing uh, uh, 
good economic progress is we are facing with a high inflation rate that is affecting the, the uh, spending power of uh, consumers. Win Win, the head of City Mart, one of the most powerful economic groups in Myanmar, which is in charge of major distribution, addresses this issue. Myanmar is one of the last frontier country in the, in the in the war, uh, uh, so with great opportunity because uh, with 52 million population and and with the um, and we are neighbor of neighbor to almost half of the world population. And, and uh, with a lot of abundance of natural resources, there are many opportunities to be uh, to be found in the country. Uh, we need to create jobs. This, this country where it needs to create jobs. Situated between China and India, Myanmar is the last strip of Asia that has yet to develop. The country is rich in natural resources, gold, jade, precious stones, and important deposits of petroleum. In short, this country of golden pagodas is or could be a modern El Dorado for foreign investment, but not without a great deal of problems. Beyond the ethnic conflicts in the north of the country and the difficult relationship between the NLD and the military, there is also the question of the Rohingya, a Muslim minority of about one million people. This population lives in Rakhine State on the border of Bangladesh in conditions of dire poverty and without any civil rights. Their plight was aggravated even more after the deaths of nine police agents working on the Burmese border in October 2016. The military retaliated brutally against the civil population and the zone continues to be under tight security with little humanitarian assistance and severe media restrictions. This situation has become extremely difficult to manage and has backed the lady into a corner. If Aung San Suu Kyi speaks up to defend the rights of the Rohingya, she will lose the support of her mainly Buddhist constituency. However, by not voicing this abuse of civil rights, she has had to endure the condemnation of the international community, which has significantly damaged her image as Nobel Peace Prize winner and peace advocate. It is an immensely delicate question of balance, which risks inflaming Buddhist extremism on one side and that of Islam on the other, with grave international consequences. In conclusion, there's both lightness and darkness hovering over the ancient golden land of Burma. The Economist magazine predicts an increase in taxes of 9% over the next four years, but the challenges here have just begun. Utat Min is the chairman of Yangon Heritage Trust, an organization which seeks to conserve and restore precious architectural structures and one of the most highly regarded foundations in the country. Utan Min is above all a person who knows and understands Myanmar deeply. For the future of Myanmar I see two paths, two possibilities. One is that we continue on this transition to civilian government, to more open government, uh, enjoy the political freedom that we have that the economy continues to grow and prosper, that the peace process is successful, and that Myanmar can be a crossroads of Asia, between South Asia, East Asia, Southeast Asia, and it becomes a cosmopolitan hub that can be one of the most prosperous parts of the world. The other option is that Myanmar clings to a very defensive nationalism, is very uncertain of opening up to the rest of the world, is eaten away by internal rivalries, internal ethnic and religious conflicts, and never is able to play this role. And I think in that situation, it's very hard to see the economy grow. And without the economy growing, it's very hard to see the political landscape, not just changing in a positive direction, but it could easily go in a backward direction as well.